Am I a herb to you? We, we spend time outside of uh, church activities, uh, not necessary for us to talk about um, the faith all the time. Yeah. Just having fun also together, that nourishes the friendship. Create this space where we can just be real. No need to be talking about work all the time. So that sometimes we, uh, we, went, we go for a hike together. It's Work famous. out, sweat a bit. Yeah, and then uh, we go to my uh, condominium's swimming pool, just enjoy. That's our uh, favourite place lah. Yeah, night of being in the jacuzzi after they have a good dinner together. Yeah, it's n there's no intention. It's just come together, spend time with one another. No agenda actually. No agenda, yeah. Yeah, just enjoying each other's presence lah. We update each other on things. So like, mm, imagine we're having a rough patch, they will turn to each other for prayers. I think one thing that was quite, is quite prominent in our friendship is praying for each other. Especially when we um, need the prayers. If we're going through something or we're struggling, then we'll ask each other like, you pray for me, do you have time? Like, I need to talk. Uh, whether it was when we were in NTU, in hall, or sometimes like even now in Circuit Breaker, just FaceTiming to ask for prayer, to ask for someone to talk to, or like, if we are struggling. So in August 2018, I flew to UK for exchange. And before, like, before I came back, she flew to U UK, was it UK? Scotland also for exchange. So we didn't see each other for 10 months. And for Ned, like, she takes the time. So she blocks out like certain days every week to call me. But then, because I'm really bad at online stuff, I actually didn't do the same. There are things that, is going, that are going on in my life, but I'm not sharing it with her because we're not talking as much. You're not keeping each other accountable anymore. Like. It was a trial because it was maybe not like feeling certain emotions so, like being frustrated or annoyed at the situation or the person but not talking about it not being upfront of it so it's like maybe pent up feelings being built up i guess not communicating things properly yeah um then how do we overcome it i think just being honest even if it's a difficult mm. thing to talk about like the feelings of annoyance so like just addressing the issues and being honest to talk about it instead of letting it fester inside and then um, come out in other ways. I think it also is because like, God is very present in the friendship. So we want to be better friends and treat each other better and work on our friendship and grow in our friendship because Jesus is there and he's the one who's directing it. So there was this period of time when um, we didn't meet up often because of Circuit Breaker and then uh, I think I, I was triggered by certain things that uh, Ryan was sharing. I think it was accumulated, right? I can't remember the details, but it reached a point where I felt that I needed to talk to Ryan. So it was very difficult because I realized that I didn't understand Ryan and he didn't understand me. And there was this like ongoing tension between us. Maybe like a clash of male ego, you know, sometimes that happens. Our pride. Yeah, we, we get stubborn, you know, in, in any friendship that happens. Yeah, so we met up, we talked, and then we had our friend who was with us. And then we just add how we how we felt and then we prayed for each other. Mm. So we were glad that there was a friend with us to also yeah. mediate our differences and just to clarify our misunderstanding. Yeah, someone it, impartial, someone neutral to come. That's from one of from words uh, words that Jesus said himself, right? Try to resolve it on your own, if not bring it to the community. So yeah. I guess that's how we also allow um, ourselves to grow in faith. In us fighting also we, we realize that where we are in in, in our faith life as well. Mm. And that helps us put on a better track again. I don't know whether I would call it a trial, but uh, leading together uh, was quite an experience because we were in the same community and uh, we were uh, sh the shepherds of the community. I think there were many a times where our opinions differed um, mm. and we had to talk it out. I think in general when we work together, actually Sarah and I, while we are king like kingdom friends, well, it's quite some, same, same but different. Whether it's working on group projects in SMU or, or uh, shepherd leading yeah. Sparrow together with another shepherd, it was difficult when we came to difficult discussions. Lah. And there would definitely be times where we argued, where we disagreed with each other. But I think nothing really ever shook our friendship too badly. Um, but I think most importantly, it's just 
being very honest with each other mm. like uh, I felt hurt when you said this or I perceived this a certain way maybe because there's no fear that the other person will uh, turn their back on you in a way mm. you are more uh, you are allowed to be more of yourself You are allowed mm. to have more of your opinion For yeah. example Without uh, You know Knowing that the other person Won't sort of judge you Or judge herself Based on you know What you are saying yeah. That really helped mm -hmm. uh, And praying together as well When At times where we couldn't reach A conclusion yeah. And we lifted it up to God When both of our flaws Started becoming more prevalent In our activities Or in our work so I think there was a certain moment where yeah, there was a bit of conflict where there were some deadlines that needed to be met. In that in those moments, being able to see that you are also that you were also a person, right? And we, we realized that okay we are struggling. And yeah, like, I think from that moment of struggle with the two of us, uh, we built like a element of trust, of openness and honesty. Like, I think when we this when we are struggling, we will share and we are accountable to it also. In kingdom friendships you come to realize that yeah, you know, you are worth fighting for. And for me, I see Greg as someone worth fighting for and for him to see the, the goodness in himself and the goodness that the Lord has in store for him. We have to be going to our same destination, right? Uh, the whole point of kingdom friendship, the big part is the word kingdom. We know ultimately that there is one King, Jesus, and you know, we, that he's, he is our same destination. It's not just about whether or not the other person is a fun and amusing person to hang out with or what I can gain out from this friendship, you know. More than just the fun and games, but I think it's, it's beyond the, the laughter. It really also includes the tears, the pain, and also the, the struggle. Lah. But I think Kingdom Friendships really, really make you into the person that you were meant to be. The beauty about having Kingdom Friendships is that your friends or friend brings you closer to Jesus and makes you a better person. I think I've become a better person in my friendship with Ned. I think I've grown to know myself more and I've also grown um, looking at her and, and how she responds to things. I feel like our differences actually helps me to see more beyond like my own life. It challenges you to think for the other. It challenges you to, to think of the other person and be less selfish, more for the other person. And what it means to be a friend for that person. Jesus teaches you how to be that. Jesus really teaches you how to be a friend to the other. He really invites us to love the other the same way he did. Mm. Yeah, and oh, it's realising that kingdom friendships are not perfect friendships either. Mm, mm. Yeah, uh, do not have that idealistic view of like what a kingdom friendship should yeah. be. And I think it's a process, right? So it's not as if like there's a light, light switch, right? Like a switch came. Now we'll be good, we'll trust each other, we'll be vulnerable. Slowly but surely, la. yeah, God will will it for it to happen. It takes a lot of grace from God. And I think mm. advice to everyone out there would also be to um, recognize that it's not in your control, right? You can, you can pray for a kingdom friend Realizing that it's, it's God who sends this friend to you It's to be um, open and trusting to the people that God puts in your life He has like a really funny plan of the people that he wants to bring to you in your life And for good reason Me and Brandon definitely didn't expect to be friends Yeah, we really don't know what Jesus has planned for us But he knows the best and he knew to bring us together and he knew that this great friendship will form yeah, to be open to Jesus and trusting in what he's doing in your life. And life in abundance with Jesus comes with uh, really wholesome relationships, friendships and people who, like Brian mentioned, uh, who fight for you, who love you and desire the best for you. It's really knowing that God has a plan for the other person and that person also knows that God has a plan for me, right? Like me and Ryan. And we try to walk there together, try to live it out together. And our Father, Father Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Father, I thank you for each person that is watching this. So Father Lord, we praise and thank you for the gift of companions. Lord Jesus, we want to lift up to you um, everyone who is watching this video, everyone who is desiring for a deeper connection with you and a deeper connection with your people. Uh, we pray for the people who feel that they have to carry their struggles and their crosses on their own. Who might be feeling isolated and alone. For those who are struggling, we pray uh, for them especially, Lord. We ask for the special grace uh, that through these companions, these people that you send their way, may these individuals 
um, come to know of your love for them. Help us to always remember that you are faithful to us and that you will never abandon us. Continue to allow uh, each of them to know that they are deeply loved by you. That your love will rest upon them in this moment of watching this video. They come to realize that you know, the crosses are meant to be carried but also not on their own and with you and with different pillars of support. That they don't always need to be put together. We pray that they may come to see the many good people that you have blessed them with. And that through our friendships, you are there. You speak through them and that our Father will bless them with the right people to walk with them, to guide them, to be the signpost back to our Father's house. Yeah, that they may be unafraid you know, of your plans for them. The beauty of exploring this new thing called a kingdom friendship. Yeah, I ask that you, you know, give uh, this brother or sister um, yeah, a desire to be open to um, the beauty, the growth, you know, the pain, but as well as the joy and freedom that comes along with it. Lord, I ask that you put in each and every person's heart this grace to and this humility to um, ask you for kingdom friendships in their lives, to ask you to review to them um, the parts of their lives where you know they need um, that support. Yeah, you lead them where they need to go. I pray that they will be open and responsive to your call and to trust that yeah, you have the best plan for them and that you know where you are leading them. Yeah, let us, your eyes, so that we can judge our friends, our loved ones, with love. Lend us your ears so that we can hear each other and to be sensitive to their needs. Lend us your heart so that we can love them more wholly, more freely and more perfectly, just like you. That they will have the grace to forgive each other and to will the good for the other hmm. and to push each other to, towards heaven and towards the mission and help us to put you at the center of it all. Amen.